Hello. Hello. Thank you guys so much for being here. Welcome to the Big Apple Film Festival. Yay. 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 I don't know if being here, but uh, I'm glad to see that this is Pat Theater. Um, Amy, I'm your host for tonight. Be sure all your cell phones are off. Um, also, right after, be sure you stick around because there's going to be a Q&A with the directors. Tonight we have a great program that I'm very excited about. Uh, we have Gorilla Bunny. We have Leslie Lansing, Maria Torres, Neighborhood Artist. Um, Gifts of Life, Profiles and Courage from the Transplant Community. And our full feature documentary, Force Change. Well, um, 
editing the film and, and uh, realizing that uh, perhaps we did really have a story and it captured enough information to uh, begin to tell it. Uh, very you know, Maria is a very complicated and very interesting person. And, uh, and we, um, we, we kind of backed into the film. We started shooting with, I, with our iPhones, and, and then we did some interviews. And, then, we did, and um, then sitting down and actually working on the piece and thinking, gosh, yeah, maybe, maybe we have something. This is something, yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Actually, can it back one more time here? And your favorite part of the entire process of shooting, from well, beginning to end, was there a favorite moment? I think meeting the different people and hearing their stories, it's so emotional. There's Absolutely. one great story after another. And I'd be so emotional listening to the interviews, and, and then in the edit, emotional. I would be emotional again. <laughs> so I just never got tired of those stories. And there's, yeah. there's so many more stories to tell. These were just three. Yeah, yeah. amazing. Yeah. OK, terrific. Thank you, guys. So um, I'm actually going to call up uh, Renee Soholt. Who is? Thank you. So, um, tell us a little bit about actually your background, and then we'll we'll get to your future. So, you come from. Tell us a little bit about what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, I actually moved to New York from New Orleans. Um, and for the past 15 years, I've worked in the television business. I'm a television producer, um, have worked, uh, have worked uh, on a lot of documentary series and uh, uh, nonfiction projects. And uh, that has kept me very busy, which is one of the reasons this film took 14 years to finish. <laughs> <laughs> so this has really been a, a personal project for you. Yeah, so I mean, basically when Katrina hit, I was working um, I was working on a project called Anthony Bourdain Reservations, and I was traveling abroad quite a bit, and um, I was between shoots, and um, I, I rented a car, and I drove down, and took two weeks and started filming. So all the early footage uh, I did myself, and then, um, and then I got busy, and time moved on, and Spike Lee put out his film, and Trouble of the Water came out, um, it was nominated for an Academy Award, and so yeah. it's changed a bit. Um, <clears throat> so you were pretty inspired by those films, it was, sounds like. I was very inspired, um, and I was searching for a focus. Originally, the film was supposed to be Some People Stayed, Some People Left. But then the, the, the film People Stayed got, got told, you know, in a very large capacity. So it, it, it became very clear early on that both from a market perspective and some of the strongest stories that I was filming were the people who left. There's something about the people who, like, had the power to go, I'm going to just start over, versus, like, you know, they, they both take a, a certain amount of tenacity in themselves, but uh, see my stories were the best for people that left. Absolutely. What does it feel like actually seeing this? You said 14 years, right? It was really weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a really bizarre experience to watch it in a, uh, uh, with an audience. It was amazing. Um, uh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad to have finished and be able to have a, a premiere here in New York at the you know, Big Apple Film Festival and yeah. to see it on, on the screen. It's, um, you know, uh, Joe Brunette, who's the DP of the film, is in the, the audience, and um, it's, oh, it's, it's, it's beautiful, it's so beautiful. Now, how did you come in contact with the people you were interviewing? Did you know them before, or? Everybody that I filmed with, I knew before Katrina. I knew them back from 2000. Right. So um, it, sometimes partners came in later that I didn't know before, but actually I, we all worked at a, a place called the House of Blues in New Orleans, and um, that became the center point. And uh, uh, so I knew them, so I was able to go down there and just call people up and say, hey, or, or have you gone to your house yet? Yeah. You know? And so I started going into people's homes with people that I knew <clears throat> um, to start off with. Great. Great. And what was your favorite part of the whole process? Because that's a long time. It's a long time. Um, Probably the editing process. Okay. I mean, I love the field. I know the field. I've worked all over the world. But the editing process for a doc is a, a, a very intimate experience and a very difficult one. And I use, we, I worked, I went through a few editors. Uh, a few of them are here in the audience. Um, but uh, I think the process of finding the story and how do you make a 
whole bunch of footage into a feature film was something that I never had to do in television, and it was something that taught me a huge amount about storytelling. So it's completely different? It's different because it has to be cohesive in a way that um, a 30-minute program doesn't need to be. You know, and, it, and, and the reason that there's this counterpoint of people in New Orleans was because I didn't feel like I really had a feature until I was able to bring something that brought the whole thing together from beginning to end. And uh, that didn't happen until you sort of sit in the, the, the editing room and go, I, I don't know if I have a film, what do I do? You know, yeah. and you sort of search for new ways to, um, to add to it. And I think it was a, a great um, discovery. And I'm sure sitting through 14 years of footage is <laughs> difficult to put together and, um, you know, be, be happy with it, think it's a cozy. Yeah, many stories never made it. Uh, so many scenes never made it. You know, it's yeah. 70 minutes and, and it's, it's a lot of footage and a lot of my life. You know, it represents um, more than just these people's stories. It, it, I, I see myself in different parts of the film at different times when I'm filming. And it's, uh, uh, yeah, I wouldn't recommend taking 14 years. Ago, no. <laughs> but. <laughs> but I'm sure it seems like a lot of people, I'm sure, can relate to the topic as well. And, um, I hope so. I hope so. I mean, I try to make it universal, the idea of what home is. You know, home is something that I think everybody sort of grapples with. And I, I'm originally from the West Coast. I've lived in New York, New York for 17 years, and I was searching for home. And, and if you have your home taken away from you, I think it's a, um, how you describe or define home will change. And, uh, and I believe that, that um, you know, Katrina is the first of of major mass migrations that have happened in this country due to global warming and will continue to happen. So internal displacement uh, in the supposed first world is not something that we've seen the last of. And so I think it's important to see a small, uh, uh, it's, a, it's a small story told for something that's going to affect people for years to come. On a bigger scale, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right. Uh, is there anything else you want to share? Let us know when when can we see this next? Or are you? Um, this is the first premiere. premiere right? This is the first yeah. premiere. This is the world premiere. Yeah. Um, I, uh, I right now I'm talking to a, a distribution company called New Day Films, looking for um, beginnings of distribution. I'm hoping next year is the 15 year anniversary of Katrina, so I'm hoping it will find a, a home at some point next year. Absolutely great. Thank you. Good. So very quickly, I'm just going to open it up if anyone has a question they want to ask. Even for the shorts, we can... Any questions from the audience? Quiet crowd. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, so we'll get to wrap it up for tonight. Thank you guys. Oh, sorry, there's one. Go ahead. Just describe the difference between the footage that you took when you went after the storm, and I assume the party footage was from people at the party, but I was just trying to get a sense of when you actually got there. When, when I got to Katrina, or to, so uh, when to you New got Orleans. down there to do the, to the filming. Yeah. yeah, I was there in October of 2005. So that was, I was, I, I drove to the city the day that it opened up to the public. It had been closed for, uh, for a couple of months. So you really saw the, the complete disaster? Completely. Yeah, yeah nothing, no, nothing had been done. Yeah. So, um, and, and you know, I didn't have anybody at the time, so it was just me and a camera. And then over time, the, the party footage was shot by, Jared Andrew Canis, who's also in the audience, um, and he uh, was at the party, and I knew I knew him, and so it was that was that was the sort of our only archival footage. Everything else was shot by either me or the DP. And did, did he also shoot the water footage of them on the boat? Yes. Great. Any other questions? One more here. Go ahead. So. Um, <coughs> So you, so you did the footage in 2005 and then 2015, and, and were you thinking you were going to finish after that, or did it, did it then, you, know, you saw these other stories evolving after that that said, I, I have to continue telling this story? Because yeah, it was, it was more that it's really hard to make a film, and sometimes uh, when you look to the future, you don't start early enough. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, uh, I had 10 minutes of this film was played on um, the PBS NewsHour uh, on the 10 year anniversary of Katrina. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then I sort of was like, now what? What do I do? You know, and so it took, it took a few years to actually get it to a place where it's like, okay, I'm finished. Cool. Okay. All right, any other questions? Okay, one last one here. I have a question for the audience, actually. Oh, no. Did anybody not know how to become an organ donor? <laughs> <laughs> Very good question. Tell us.
tell us how you become an organ donor. It's very simple. You just go on organdonor.gov, select your state, fill in your name, and that's about it. Just uh, Everybody has an iTunes account or some kind of account. Uh, it's less time than that, actually. Very simple. Save lives. Well done. Oh, you're going to sign up next. Perfect. You're the first person. Perfect.com. All right. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you to our shorts. Um, and thank you guys for, for enjoying the show here.